And welcome to Nerdstalker. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerdstalker on Twitter. You can find us at nerdstalker.com, YouTube, you know, all the Nerdstalker TV stuff with a very special guest here today. And this is Sergio Gonzalez. So let me tell you a little bit about Sergio. So Sergio Gonzalez is the head of innovation programs at eBay. He created the eBay Memory Club to inspire others in the highly competitive world of Silicon Valley to take up memory training as a way to expand their abilities. A lifetime, a, li a long time life hacker, Sergio is always looking for different strategies to improve life and is responsible for Pharaoh's memory mission statement to make practical memory available to the masses. Welcome to the show, Sergio. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. So, Sergio, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, um, how'd you get into all this? Where are you from? How'd you grow up? And um, and all of that. How'd you get into the world of memory training and competition? Sure. Uh, well, if we want to talk about how I grew up, I was a, yeah, a military. I was a military brat. So uh, uh, that explains pops, everything. Exactly. <laughs> my pops was in the Navy, so we moved around quite a bit, and. Um, as you can imagine, it's a little tough being the new kid all the time. I went to three different high schools in three different countries. Yeah. And so uh, you learn very quickly being a military dependent how to connect with people rather quickly because if you took too long, you were off onto your next station. Um, and, and as you can imagine, academics can be challenging as you're shifting um, from school to school and trying to figure out the dynamics and the chemistry. And um, my degree is actually in microbiology and molecular genetics. I'm a, wow. UC I'm a UCLA alumni, go Bruins. Yeah. Uh, and uh, on hiatus from entering my MD-PhD program, I got involved with technology. And that was just when the dot-coms were starting to take off. Mm -hmm. And I moved up to the Bay Area and um, have been here ever since. The reason why I got involved with memory uh, training in the first place was because I recognized that for myself, I was struggling a lot with memorizing names, or mm -hmm. at least remembering names, I should say, say more um, precisely. And as you can imagine, in, in my discipline, and, and probably with most disciplines and industries, it's to your advantage to be able to recall people's names and, and the folks mm -hmm. that you work with and your customers. So I was on a mission to try and figure out how could I train my brain to be better at mm -hmm. doing that. And I looked at a lot of different memory programs, and, and the one that really resonated with me was Dave's program, Dave Farrell's program. Mm -hmm. on how he taught memory techniques. And one of the things that really struck me that was different about Dave's approach was that a lot of the memory programs that I had encountered espoused a very specific way of learning memory. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, not everyone learns the same way. And what I really appreciated about Dave's approach is he, he first speaks a lot about uh, what we call memory modalities and memory personalities. He acknowledges that different people learn in different ways and people have, have developed different strengths in memory. So rather than intimidating someone who's new to memory training about you must learn in this particular way, mm -hmm. he first helps you understand where, where are your natural strengths in memory and how do we enhance those and then slowly enhance and grow those skills so you can tap into other memory techniques. Mm -hmm. and so, so when we're talking about like other methods that people might know about, um, in this like a method of Loki kind of thing or, or right. major method or things like that. Um, this, this particular program that you're referring to, it has its own sort of, or is it pulling from influences from there? Or? It certainly does. You know, memory training has been around since, you know, before the ancient Greeks and mm -hmm. the ancient Greeks really who, who codified some of those practices. So certainly Dave's approach takes the best of those techniques and he has incorporated his own and some that are uniquely his own. But I think what really resonated with me is how he articulated it for me, how he was able to convey that information in a way that my, my mind likes to learn. Mm. It's a very approachable uh, technique. As I said, it can be intimidating to go, if you already have some misgivings about your, your memory prowess, mm -hmm. um, and then being forced into a particular square peg or square hole to fit in if, if you're a round peg, is really hard and it, and, it, and it creates barriers for the learning process. And so what I really appreciated about Dave's approach was, first of all, the way he speaks to you is very approachable, it's very personable. And you can tell in the way that he speaks about memory, about his passion for it, and um, how he wants you to be, to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, here, here is a guy who is the world record holder in memory, and, and it's very easy for one to say, 
Well, it's easy for you, Dave. You've been doing this for 20, 20 odd years and you're the world record holder of memory. Of course, memory is going to be easy for you. Mm. But you can tell in his voice that while that's well and good and while he's parlayed that into creating this access for people, he really does want, as I say, democratize practical memory. Mm. It's great that he can do the amazing memory feats he can do as are many amazing memory masters out in the world. Mm -hmm. But he really wanted to take the, the, the exercises used in that training so that you can do things like, how do you learn a language very quickly? How do you pick up an instrument and start to understand chord progressions very quickly? And mm -hmm. I even have a friend who uses this technique with his um, martial arts students. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, rather than just, of course, on the written word, he would list out the katas that they would have to remember. Mm -hmm. But once the student has recalled the katas, they would then have to perform it. And that's right. how you translate what some might, some, some call the, the sports memory Mm -hmm. into practical memory and it's very empowering you know especially i'm very passionate about learning languages and um, most modern spoken languages if you know the first the most frequently t used 1200 words in that language mm -hmm. you're pretty much conversationally fluent in that language in fact mm -hmm. i just got back from a trip to brazil where i studied um, portuguese for for about a week mm -hmm. before coming in country and i was walking around speaking to folks and they were shocked uh, this was wow. probably at the end of my second week they were saying, I can't believe that you've, you've only been studying Portuguese for two weeks. Wow. Now, clearly, I'm nowhere proficient, and you can tell I'm not a, a native, but they, it was still pretty um, impressive for them to see that with, with, with some mindful uh, study and mm -hmm. with applying memory techniques, you can, uh, you can learn a lot very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Did you... Um try other memory methods that just weren't working for you and things like that. And also, um, going back to Dave Farrow, David, David Farrow, um, he, although someone can be the champion or the best in a particular athletic feat or something like that, oftentimes they're not the best teacher or coach, right, right. Uh, for that particular uh, discipline. So right. it's a, that's, a, um, that's a real bonus to find that type of thing as well. Yes. yes. I did use other techniques, of course. I looked into a lot of um, – the works written by Buzan and, and folks like that and, and some of the work coming out of the WMC, the World Memory Championships. And like I said, you know, these folks are doing very impressive things. But again, it's a very, learning is a very personal thing. And beyond just even getting to the techniques, and, and like we've said before, a lot of these techniques techniques are shared. What really mattered a lot for me was how is it being conveyed to me? Mm -hmm. it, is, yeah. the, is the prose in such a manner that um, – helps lower some of these barriers, these learning barriers that I have? Um, is it something that I feel like it can relate to? And, um, you know, as you mentioned with, with Dave being able to do the certain things that he can do, what makes him such a great teacher and, and able to connect with uh, memory students? Um, you know, I've known Dave for a while now and we're, we're actually pretty good friends and, and, oh, cool. um, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. Dave's very, very open about the fact that he had learning disabilities when he was growing up. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as he tells it, he got into memory training to try and overcome some of those challenges. So I think it makes for a great instructor when you've had to learn and teach yourself and struggle right. because it, it humanizes the experience. He, he, he wasn't born a memory master. He trained himself to be memory master and so when you come from that struggle, when you come from that effort, I think it, it creates this empathy when you're trying to teach those techniques to other people who may be struggling. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the nice thing about his approach is, as we've said, one way of learning may come very naturally to one person, whereas another might struggle with it. Um, and in a very similar way, what, what's always come pretty easily for me are, are numbers. I've always mm -hmm. just naturally understood numbers well and, and recalled them very easily, but mm -hmm. names were a challenge for me. So again, the, the nice thing about his approach and the memory tournaments he's created is it's inclusive of all. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the, the games is that it progresses as the student progresses. So we're not gonna match you up against Dave uh, mm -hmm. in memorizing decks of cards, of course not. Mm -hmm. But you can find like-minded people who want to learn how to improve their memory and you can train together. And as you get better, the way that the games are set up, 
they can evolve so you can continue to challenge yourself at the pace that makes sense for you. you mm -hmm. It definitely will stretch you, but it won't be so insurmountable that you throw up your hands and say, you know what, I, I, this is as far as I can go. I think so the other is this a particular training or is this like um, are we getting into and perhaps we should get into the uh, eBay memory club mm -hmm. um, is that what we're discussing here when you're talking about working with others indeed so the actual teaching of the techniques mm -hmm. there are a plethora of resources out there like I said there there are other brilliant memory masters out there and each of them have their own techniques and their own ways of conveying that information and so of course Dave has his own um, so one is the actual instruction of the techniques. Mm -hmm. What we talk about when we say about memory club, a, a small portion of that indeed is introducing this new material, this new, uh, these new memory techniques. But as, as you can imagine with most learning, if you don't practice it, you, you won't have skill acquisition. Mm -hmm. And so to me, this is really the brilliance of the Faro method and Faro uh, memory tournaments is that, yes, you're going to learn the technique, but how do we create an environment where you'll want to learn, you'll want to practice those techniques, you'll want mm -hmm. to progress, you'll want to continually challenge yourself? Mm -hmm. And how do you do that in a fun environment that's collaborative? And so when we talk about a memory club, all a memory club is, I like to say, are just two like-minded individuals who want to improve their memory. That's it. Mm -hmm. now, whether that's a formal club, such as one I have here at eBay, whether it's one that you have at a university or a high school or an elementary school, or whether it's just your loved ones at home. Um, that's a club. A club is just a pair of people at a minimum who are trying to improve memory. And the nice thing about the way that these clubs work is uh, some of the clubs are open uh, across geographies. So you don't have to be in that physical space with that club in order to interact with them or practice with them. And so to, to give you a little bit more of a concrete feel of what is, what is a memory club and how do we use it at eBay. Mm -hmm. At eBay, we have um, a regular meetup. As you can imagine, we're all busy professionals. So we try and find that balance of what's frequent enough that it's, it remains relevant, but not so frequent that people get overwhelmed or, sure. or start, stop showing up. Yeah, so at, at lives. Present, yeah. <laughs> right. So, so at present, we meet every other week. And what we do is about every third time we meet, we talk about some new technique. So whether it's, this is how you remember where you put your car keys, or this is how you uh, remember your shopping list for the week, or your to-do list for the week, or this is how you recall names. We introduce a topic about every third meetup. Hmm. And then um, in the intervening meetups, what we do is we play these memory games. And the memory games are the application of those techniques. So uh, to briefly describe what a memory game is and, and what we refer to as a memory tournament, you, you are provided a, uh, a piece of paper with what, that we call a monumentum. Mm -hmm. And all that a monumentum is is a list of things. It can be anything. It can be a list of words. It can be a list of numbers. It can be pictures of a deck of cards. It can be um, just pictures from a coloring book. It doesn't matter. It's just a list of things. And what you do is you'll have two players and you'll have a timekeeper judge. So the two players will be given this monumentum by the judge timekeeper. And the judge timekeeper, usually a piece of paper, a monumentum will have multiple sets. And so the judge mm -hmm. will say, I want you to study set three. Mm -hmm. And at, at the beginning, what we found is most uh, beginner memory um, students, three minutes is about sufficient time to get them going, but not so long that the game drags on. So let's say we're beginning. As a beginning memory, memory student, I'm not going to overwhelm you with uh, difficult things to remember. So you'll, you'll notice on the memory tournament site, if you create a default monumentum, it's first grade words. Because I would mm -hmm. hope that most people that are, are studying memory techniques are at least are comfortable with first grade words. Oh, boat, car, ear, eye. The, we don't want the content to overwhelm the learning. Mm -hmm. so, nice. so, in this, so in this case, you'll have a monumentum of first grade words, and then the two players will have three minutes to study the set that's been specified by the judge. So let's say that you and I were playing, and the judge says, Dolphin and Serge, you have set three, three minutes, go. Mm -hmm. So you and I will study that list of, of things, and at the end of the time, the judge will take the monumentum away, and you and I will volley back and forth. We'll play 
either rock, paper, scissors, or flip a coin to determine who goes first. But the impressive thing is not just to remember as many of the things as you can, it's mm -hmm. to remember them in the order that they appear. Yeah. So you and I would volley back and forth, and the game stops in the moment, let's say that I couldn't recall the next word. You have the opportunity to recall that next word. If you're able to do that, you win that match. If you're unable to recall the next word, then it's considered a push, and we play on. So you can, yeah. you can imagine this format lends itself to a lot of different um, a, lo a lot of different ways to evolve the gameplay. For example, you can shorten the period that we have to study the set. So if we're getting really good at three minutes and we're getting through the whole set, then you might say, okay, now you have two minutes, now you have one minute, now you have 30 seconds. Right. Or if, if first grade words are getting too easy for us, we move to collegiate level words. Or we start moving to numbers and so on and so forth. And so you can see that the game progresses based on the skill level of the players. Now, where I'm very passionate about this and how we use it at, e at eBay Memory Club is we, we use relevant content. So mm -hmm. for example, if you're a French teacher, you, you probably shouldn't use first grade words. You should use French vocabulary words. And so as a teacher, what you would do is have you, you would have your French students play the same game, and you might add an additional element where you say, okay, you must recall the French word, but you also must tell me what that word is in English. Mm. So you can see how this format gets very flexible. Now what we do at eBay is of course we're using it for things like how do we, we have over 12,000 employees worldwide, so how do we know who to talk to? How do we know which employees are in which teams? Or which experts in the company are around for certain topics? Or we might study who are our top customers in certain categories. Mm -hmm. Or um, for our programmers, what are the methods in that particular language or the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, code that you have to recall? So that's how we happen to use it at eBay. Wow. But, but as I've talked to other memory club leaders, I'm always amazed by the different ways that they're using it. Like I said, yeah. a friend of mine uses the it for martial arts. Must be endless. Yeah, that's right. martial that's arts. Right. That's right. You're talking katas and moves. Well, let's talk about some of the things that you did talk about, the um, US memory tournament. Um, can, can you expand on what is that, when is it, where is it, and sure. it, there's a ton of stuff happening, it looks like. I flashed the, the website while you were discussing some of it, mm -hmm. but if you can uh, touch on that, that'd be great. Sure, and, and so we're hosting the a US Memory Championship here at eBay uh, in San Jose. It's at our Main Street building here in Campbell. The address is 2025 East Hamilton Avenue here in San Jose, and it's open to the public. Uh, so we encourage everyone to drop by with themselves, with their loved ones, with their students, their children, invite their schools. It was really important to us at eBay that um, we make this resource public because one of the things that we're very proud of in our culture and our tradition here at eBay is we, we consider ourselves custodians of, of giving back to our community and giving back to our, our marketplaces here. And so this is one way that the eBay innovation community wants to give back to our neighbors and say, look, you know, we're benefiting from these, these techniques. Let's open it up so that the public can experience it as well. And how often are you going to get a chance to learn directly from the world, world record holder in memory? Um, so the way that the day will run is the first part of the morning, about an hour to hour and a half. It just depends on how many questions Dave gets. He'll right. teach the basic techniques. So the nice thing about this is, wow. even if you haven't had a single minute of memory training, if you come in the morning, you will learn everything you need to slip into the second part of the day, which is the actual games. So, That's awesome. So again, you know, I really want to, to let the audience know, please don't be intimidated by um, whether you consider yourself to be a good memory student or not. When I first began, when I first began memory training, I admitted, hey, I, I'm horrible at, at remembering names and, mm -hmm. and I have to work at it. I still have to work at it. Mm -hmm. But um, please don't feel like, hey, I've never had training, so this isn't for me. Everything you need to be successful, you will learn in the first hour. And I, I'll put a little plug there, and that is what you're going to be stunned by is how quickly you will learn. It, you actually will start to amaze yourself 
even within the first 15 to 20 minutes of, of learning the technique, I've been fortunate enough to give uh, similar memory talks around uh, the country. And what uh, there's always a moment in the audience I look for. And it's a very particular part of the workshop that I look for. And there's a, there's a glint that I see in people's eyes. And it's that eureka moment when people realize, oh my gosh, I'm actually doing this. I, w I came in these doors thinking, I have horrible memory, and yet within 30 minutes, I'm doing this thing that I never could have imagined I could do. That's so and awesome. Because I, I thought this was, I thought the tournament was strictly just for professional memory people. And I'm like, you know, I'd really like to watch, but it kind of might be boring to watch people, you know, just memorize decks, cards, sure. and sort of, I mean, that'd be neat for a while. But you're saying that the actual general public can participate. Not only that, you get like a basic master class at the beginning, right? Absolutely. And then you can. And then anyone can participate of any sort of ages or, you know, within Correct. reason? Yeah, so um, one of the things that we're, we're happy, we're, we're welcoming, uh, I believe there's at least one, if not a few other memory masters who are coming to visit us here at eBay for this memory tournament. And, wow, to, that's great. and to your point, you know, you'll get to see the amazing memory feats these folks are able to do. Mm -hmm. But as, a, as I like to call it, as a memory master in training, you'll get to participate as well. And we do serve all ages. I've taught these techniques to children as young as six, wow. to people over 80. Oh, wow. and, and again, um, the beauty of the game, and I like to, to say this to Dave, um, on any given day, I, I have a chance to beat him. Because, <laughs> yeah. because memory, you know, in, especially in a, a game situation, a lot of things can happen. You can mm -hmm. be distracted. You can... Sure. You can think about, oh my gosh, I got to buy that on sure. my way home. Sure. So on any given day, it's really exciting because, you know, I, I celebrate those moments when I beat Dave. Actually, it's, it's never happened yet. But yeah, I yeah. That day because I can, you know, talk trash to him. Yeah. Um, the last time we hosted this, this um, event at eBay, uh, there was a young girl who came in. I believe she, I, I'll, I don't quote me on this, but I believe she was 12 or 13. And um, she had never had any memory training. By the end of the game, she had won most of her categories. Wow, that's incredible. Now, of course, everyone's experience will be different, but it, this part is very, very important to me. I, I want the audience to know that I wasn't born with, with great memory. I had to work at it, and I had to train at it, and I deliberately sought out Dave's program to learn. Uh, right. Please, please feel welcome in our space. Please feel welcome at eBay. We want you to take away from it whatever you want. Not everyone wants to memorize decks of cards. Not everyone wants to even play the game. But we hope that in spending a little time with Dave, you'll be inspired to want to learn or better yourself in the way that you want. Right, that's a great I'm, point. I'm not yeah. gonna prescribe to you, okay, your mission is to learn how to memorize a deck of cards in sure. 10 minutes. Right. It's whatever makes sense to you. And it's really empowering and, and gratifying for me to see people applying this in their daily lives. I have colleagues at work who will come in and say, Serge, I was practicing with this, this with my daughter in the car, and now my niece is into it, that's and, great. and they're applying it to their studies. So that's what I hope the audience gets from, from visiting with us on the 15th. That's awesome. You know, um, and just to share some of my story as well, is I, I, I suffered with a lot of these learning disabilities as well, uh, things like ADD and, and that type of thing. And and I constantly have went through the whole self-help books and all, all the methods of all kinds of things to just better myself as much as I can. I find structure helps a lot. I've read a lot about, uh, some well, to some degree, uh, memory methods, you know, and reading is difficult, right? So audio books have been a godsend for, for someone like me, a lot of audio stuff. And I'm much more of a visual type, you know, um, to learn these things. You, you say numbers are, work good for you. For me, it's just images right um and uh i've also found that i'm not i haven't oftentimes put myself in the spotlight so if you go to this type of event and perhaps you do sit back and you, you glean some wonderful information from mr farrow uh you might not want to compete because you're the shy type right or, sure. or something like that but you might go home and 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 be the type to to take it and apply it as you said in some sort of way maybe later you'll regret it or come back next time if there is a next time so that you can participate or something like that um did, did you find yourself in this type of model as well, like uh, going through all kinds of self-help books and, and stuff like that? I did. You know, as, as you introduced me, I, I'm a lifelong learner, and I'm a life hacker, and I'm a brain hacker. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly doing different kinds of experiments in, cool. in meditation and meta-learning. 
-hmm. And, you know, I, I'm willing to give anything a try because mm -hmm. as I said, I, I never know what's going to connect with me. And it's not, it's in no way an indictment or a slight on that particular book or that technique. It's just, sure. it didn't connect with me. Yeah, and, sure. and so, um, you know, for those folks who are a little bit shy and um, who need a little bit more time to process, mm -hmm. I really think that's really the special thing about the culture and the community that, that Dave is building. Um, it's, it's meant to be inclusive, not exclusive. It's meant to recognize that people learn in different ways and people learn at different paces. And so for our visitors who are gonna come visit us on, on that Saturday, um, of course we would love you to play with us because I think you'll find it's a very fun and, and engaging way to learn memory. But even if you're not quite ready yet, please feel empowered. Please take this content home and use it in the way that you, you think makes sense for you. And if, if you feel more comfortable with your loved ones at home, like I said, a, a memory club is you and your parents, you and your children. Uh, yeah. If your family has always said, hey, we've always wanted to go to Paris, let's all learn French together. Right. It, you, you can create the environment that's the most safe and comfortable for you. And the beauty of what, what Dave is trying to build is this is a global community. So even if you show up at, at this event and you're not quite ready yet to talk or your, your questions occur to you afterwards, all you have to do is go back to the memorytournaments.com site, memorytournaments.com, and uh, there's a community there ready to, to give you help. You'll see there's a list of clubs that are worldwide, and, and many of them are open to other people joining, even if you don't sit in that particular location. Um, Dave is constantly adding new learning content for free mm -hmm. on the website. And, of course, it, you know both mine and Dave's passion is helping schools and helping students. Yeah. Um, so if you are an educator or um, an administrator at a learning institution and you want to learn more, please come visit with us, get a taste of it, and then reach out to us afterwards. And we're happy to help you get started. That's awesome. So one of the things I was going to, we kind of touched on is like, uh, what kind of advice would you've given your, the younger Sergio, right? So who was, who's starting his uh, memory journey? And also, if you could share any sort of books, uh, you've already touched on uh, memory methods is something that I've talked about in any other videos or anything like that. Yeah, so what advice I would give my younger self? Um, one of the tough one. No, no, one, <laughs> one of the things that I found as I've taught these techniques is, is that children are brilliant memory learners. Mm -hmm. um, as, as you mentioned for yourself, you like to learn visually. Mm -hmm. And while that's not true of all people, mm -hmm. we found, generally speaking, it tends to be a basic skill most people have. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I'm teaching children, I love teaching them because one of the techniques you use is to create these visual stories in your mind. Mm -hmm. and, ch and we tell the children as, as outlandish as you can make it, as, as mm -hmm. extreme or strange or... or um, as much as you can make it stand out in your mind, that's what your brain keys into, those uh, atypical experiences, and that's what makes it stick and memorable and easily recalled is when you do that. So right. um, kids are great at that because there's no filter for a child, right? Of course horses can talk. Of course bears can be purple. Yeah. And so the advice I would give my younger self, and it, and it brings, it kind of connects with your second question, um, is to remind myself not to lose that creative side. I work in a, in a technical discipline, mm -hmm. and I'm actually one of those technologists who say, you know there's an art and a beauty to code as well. There's a mm -hmm. creativity to it. Any, yeah. any programmer can tell the difference between elegant code and inelegant code. Mm -hmm. And so the advice I would give my younger self is cultivate that imagination, cultivate that creativity, because not only is it good for you for the spirit, but it actually has very practical applications for your mind in the technical disciplines and for memory. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I do to train myself is really just creating these stories and these visualizations um, and making these, these connections that way. And so that kind of leads me into some of my favorite books, not necessarily just for memory per se. Sure, any books that you want to share. Things but the, that impacted you mm -hmm. sure the kelly's uh wrote a book called creative confidence mm -hmm. uh these are the founders of ideo and and um, right. and founder of, of d school at stanford 
And they talk about the fact that as we grow up, we lose this creative confidence and how much more impactful we can be in this world if we recapture that, if we instill that confidence in others. So Creative Confidence by um, uh, David and Tom Kelly is, is a book that I refer to often. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, of course, Dave has, has his learning materials that connected with me. And, um, and on his site, you can also find the Memory Tournaments book of how you get started and how you host your own tournaments and your, your own clubs and the basic techniques that you need to learn. That's going to be a useful reference for folks. Uh, on a personal level, I, I refer multiple times during the year to books like Letters from a Stoic, uh, mm -hmm. Seneca, mm -hmm. uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, um, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer is another book that I that really connected with me in finding my purpose and my center. Um, the Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Uh, it's a Ryan. great book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Lean Startup by Eric Ries. Yes, that's an and, incredible book. Mm -hmm. Right. And another book that I think really connects with this conversation we're having about visualization, Dan Rome's Back of the Napkin. Yes. Yeah. So, Dan is fantastic. We've talked to him. Right. Right. So as, as, you, as you try and convey complex ideas and as you try and have a conversation around complex ideas, using visuals is an incredible way to, to connect that information, make it memorable, synthesize the, the connections across them. And I think that's very relevant for, for memory. In fact, we just did that here at eBay Innovation Programs where we use graphic visualization to help connect complex content that our employees or inventors need to remember, but we did it in a visual way. So mm -hmm. now it's great to see them because after these workshops, that you see what we, what used to be a very static meeting, people right. feel confident walking up to the board and contributing and drawing and adding things. Yeah, and it makes the conversation so much more rich, right. and it makes the content so much more memorable. Um, so you're you're hitting on a very fundamental aspect um, in beginning memory, which is tapping into those senses. We yeah. talk a lot about a lot about visualization, but. We, we, we we're inclusive of all of the memory of all of the senses. So right. sight, smell, touch, right. taste. Um, they're, they're touched on like uh, audibly, right? So audibly it resonated with me. And I don't want to give people the wrong impression that I get a picture in my mind and I remember it forever. It wasn't like that. I release a lot of this stuff. So in, in going back to the hard work and the repetition and um, having the uh, meetups and that the clubs and things like that so that you can practice, for me, it's a lot of failing, right? Failing and right. doing it over and over and over right. to to to. to capture and really get that stuff and I think that that is the case for oftentimes for a lot of people and sometimes we get stuck into this I'm a visual learner I'm you know I'm not kind of thing sometimes it's just reps it's a lot of reps you know yeah I'm really glad you touched on that and, and again you know I talk a lot about confidence and confidence breeds confidence mm -hmm. and that's the nice thing about memory games is that you are able to punctuate those moments of progression with moments of celebration. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you were good at memorizing 20 words in three minutes, and now you're memorizing 40 words in two minutes, you can celebrate that, and you can actually mark your progress. For sure. And exactly to your point, one of the most frustrating things about learning is when you're just not getting it. And mm -hmm. depending on, on where you are in your learning and, and what your experience has been, it, it can be easy to just give up, say, hey, I'm, I'm just always going to have terrible memory. Mm -hmm. And so, again... Or I'm I not smart, right? That's right. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I, that I love that Dave always says is, you know, most of us, unless you have some, some actual um, uh, physical disorder or some other issue going on with your brain, most people mm -hmm. you encounter are actually born with the potential for what we, what's now defined as genius-level memory. Mm -hmm. So genius level memory is, is when one can recall in a, it's called a random sequence test, um, eight to nine items in sequence. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll see by the end of the workshop with Dave, almost everyone will walk out of that room having accomplished that task. And again, I, I love that you, you called out the fact that you're going to stumble and you're going you're gonna to forget things and you're going to you know, want to give up, but you got to keep at it. And one thing that I would tell an aspiring memory master, as with anything, 
um, so much of memory is based on intention. It's based on intention mm -hmm. and observation. And so Dave talks about this a lot, about being a keen observer of the world around you, but setting that intention. One of the, one of the things that I loved about um, learning memory that he taught me pretty early on was, I think you, you might have heard this before, when you meet someone, repeat their name three times. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what we call rope memory. You're, you're actually right. re repeating it multiple times. Mm -hmm. But there's this very clever trick that Dave does where he says when, he's, when he sees someone approaching him or if he's in an environment where he's going to be meeting a lot of people, he's trained himself to prepare his mind by asking one simple question. I wonder what his name is. I wonder her, what her name is. So that by, that mm -hmm. by the time that person approaches you or by the time that person is introduced to you by someone else, your brain is already primed to think. It's already right. curious. It's already yeah, queued up, right? Yeah. Right. It's already primed to to want to accept that information. Take it in. Uh -huh. And it's such a simple thing. So if I if I if we didn't know each other and we were at a party and I knew you were approaching my way or Dave told me, hey Serge, I want to I want you to meet someone. Mm -hmm. I will prime my brain by saying, I wonder what his name is. Mm. And it just opens it up. It opens it up to receive the information. Well, that's uh, yeah. That's the first time I've heard that one. Usually, it's the old, you know, oh hey Sergio, and then using Sergio in the sentence again, okay. right? That's the yeah. the typical sort of business type of yeah. approach, right? And then it whoop, yeah. it could go away. And and it's funny, my colleagues well, who know I do memory training, they they always tease me when I forget something. Yeah. And, I, and my and my excuse is always, well, I didn't I didn't set the intention to remember it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's the key. That's the key. That's a lot of intentions. Well, Sergio, I want to be respectful of your time and in in all of this wonderful content. And hopefully people can get more information about what you're doing um, and all the websites. Can you share where they can get more information about you, all the URLs you mentioned today of all these websites sure. and whatever way, other way? Sure. Uh, be sure to visit us at uh, memorytournaments.com. That's where you can learn more about memory games and the basic learning techniques and and as I mentioned, a lot of those Dave gives away for free. So you can see that our memory tournaments it has all the information you need to get started. Awesome. And then if you're interested at visiting with us on April 15th, uh, you've already, Nerd Soccer's already flashed the, uh, the right, site. Yeah. Yeah. But just, you can go to Eventbrite and search for Dave Farrow. At the moment, he only has one event going on, thankfully. So if you go to Eventbrite and just search for Dave Farrow, you'll see it's, it's the April 15th event here in San Jose at eBay Main Street. How exciting. All right. That's great. So thank you, everyone, again, for a, another episode of NerdStalker. I am Adolfo Fronda at NerdStalker on Twitter. Again, you can find us at NerdStalker.com. On YouTube, you can watch us so at uh, NerdStalker TV uh, is our YouTube channel. And on iTunes, give us a thumbs up and do the whole like and the subscribe thing for all the places. Okay. So thanks again, everyone, you know, for watching and listening out there. See you next time.